So, hi guys, welcome to Bollywood Life. Hi. Hi. Hello, good to be here, Imran. Thank you so much. So, I saw the film last night, okay? Uh, yes. I have I have my things. For, I, I need to start with the thing, like, I love the movie, first of all. I love the movie for the message that it, it has given us. I love the movie that it is, it's not stretched for more than, like, one and a half hours. So, the director was able to tell the movie, like, within the span of time. Okay, I like the color tone of the movie. Okay, uh, I want to know what was it about? What was it about the movie that you guys liked? So this was the thing that I liked. I want to know personally what you guys liked. <laughs> I liked everything about the movie. You know, it has various elements to it. It's a story that, um, you know, it, it's I believe a very unique story. Something that has never been attempted before. It, it's visually very strong. Uh, it's a film that you know talks about a lot of things. It talks about love. It talks about jealousy. It talks about power. It's a you know fantasy world that Anvita has created here. So with, where there is a lot of drama, where there is romance, there is uh, you know innocence. And despite having all these elements, the storytelling is very simple. Where you you know see this this journey of this little girl called Bulbul, which is the character that I'm playing. From from being an innocent, uh, you know, gullible person to becoming a strong, independent woman, I think this this film has great representation of women, and that for me was you know the USP of the film. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and we had a lot of fun shooting for it. Each day on set was was a new learning experience. I've had this opportunity to work with actors like Rahul Sir, <laughs> Param, Avinash, Pauli, and it was just a wonderful experience for me. All right, Rahul, we'll start with you as well. Tell me what drawn to you this, uh, what drawn you to this movie, and what was the thing that you liked particularly about Bulbul? You know, when I read the script, I, uh, I, I, I called Anvita back in two hours. I think she was expecting a call the next day, but I called her in two hours because right. I was so struck by the by the by the story and the way it was written. Um, such a beautiful story of uh, coming of age, of um, a woman who's otherwise been oppressed. Uh, so that appealed to all my sensibilities as a human being about um, strong, assertive women, uh, you know, carving a space for themselves in a world that men think they rule. So that was uh, that was that was a no-brainer for me to to love. But what I loved about it uh, equally, if not more, was the way it had been written as the supernatural fable uh, into which this had been worked in, and. The world that she created, uh, the characters that she wrote, the uh, the cleverness and yet sometimes the simplicity with which things happened, um, I could see the film as she was writing it. You should read the script because it's written so evocatively. It's written with such a with such a, with pictures in mind, you know, that uh, I could mm-hmm. see it. And then, of course, the challenge was to bring it to to light. I'm not going to influence the viewers as to what they should think about the film because I've seen the film. But the -hmm. world that I saw in my mind's eye when I was reading the script and the world that has emerged, uh, it's as good, if not what I imagined, uh, and the characters. And she didn't compromise for a second on what she had written, on the uh, the, the care of how she had written characters, uh, how she had written my my characters, uh, Indranil and uh, Mahindra. Um, you know, so uh, from the clothes to the production design to the photography to all of that, it was uh, a work of love that is that that mm-hmm. was artistic in its in its entirety. And I, uh, she's fantastic right. with actors. Uh, so I, you know, I I loved every moment of it. And I've I've said this before, working with clean slate films, and of course I know uh, w- working with Netflix. But in my 27 years of experience. Uh, both on and off the set of a movie, and 36 or 37 or 38 films I've done, uh, this is possibly the finest experience I've had, cumulatively, both on the set, off the set, with the actors, with the crew, with Karnesh, with Anushka, with the entire production team. Uh, This is not because this film is releasing. You know by now that I I call it as I see it. So for me, it was uh, Mm -hmm. really possibly the finest experience of my career. 
Oh, wow. That's amazing. Ma'am, I want to know about, uh, you know, from you as well. Uh, this story is so re relatable today as well, because, you know, a world is going through a pandemic. Uh, within that thing, women are fighting domestic abuse and uh, domestic abuse and violence. I guess this movie highlights that particular issue as well. Was this the message given behind the movie? <sighs> uh, this question's for me, Imran? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So, uh, like we were saying earlier, we set out to tell an engaging fable and it happens right. to be about women and things that can happen and things that can go wrong and things that they have to rise from. Uh, right. The idea is to say that you can, that terrible things sometimes happen, but people should realize that, uh, that you will not get away with it if you do terrible things to women that there is some form of justice that is always served. So think twice before you try to hurt or impose your will on a woman. That is mm -hmm. what the story is trying to do. Bless you. All right. Okay. That, that's a good thing. Uh, sir, let's talk about OTT as a platform, you know, uh, where OTT is providing work for a lot of new actors that's emerging, but it also it's also helping uh, create a strong woman character, you know, have, having a protagonist as a woman and the story is revolving around the woman. So do you think OTT is that brave to have a have a film surrounded around a woman and tell a story through, uh, through her eyes, you know, like Bulbul? Bul. So uh, tell me what's your view on it. How, uh, how brave is OTT according to you guys? Sorry, you said so. Are now you let's asking start with you. Okay. No, no, I'm asking. Um, <laughs> let's start with you. Yeah. Uh, well, look, I don't think it's the platform. Uh, okay. I made Chameli, which was all about a woman and about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, her, her struggles and her rights and, and her feistiness and all of that. And that was for the cinema halls, right? Um, I mm -hmm. think the bravery or courage is shown by the platform itself. The platform has right. to have a belief that many platforms and i won't name them are showing the mm -hmm. same um, patriarchal or misogynistic or substandard trash that uh, you would see in um, uh, on television or you would see in the cinema hall so creativity right. and the quality of a product doesn't depend on which platform you're putting it on but the selection mm -hmm. of the curating of which products come on my platform versus which products mm -hmm. come on other platform depends on the platform so right now we're talking yeah. about Netflix and we're sitting here releasing a film on Netflix. And there are, apart yeah. from Netflix, there are two or three platforms in the world today that have shown tremendous taste and tremendous awareness for what they can do with OTT as a platform versus what you could mm -hmm. not do in cinema. But to say that right. you're constrained by putting it on cinema, I mean, the Iranian films of the 70s, 80s and 90s have shown that uh, you can do things on cinema that are luminous and that would bloom equally well mm -hmm. on an OTT platform. So the short answer is that yes, it can be free to be on an OTT platform, but it depends finally on the taste and the direction the platform wants to take. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's ask the director itself. So tell me, what do you think about OTT as a platform and how brave it is for you, you know, telling a story about a woman, which uh, a story which is revolving around a woman. A woman is a protagonist. It usually doesn't happen in a big cinema, you know, or it doesn't happen like in a uh, movie getting released in big cinemas. Do you think uh, OTT as a platform where a story like Bulbul is supposed to go? So, uh, Bulbul was uh, always meant for uh, a release on, on Netflix. That is true. Mm -hmm. But I believe that mm -hmm. uh, good stories work everywhere. So, if right. your story is good, it will work whether it's theatre or, or uh, OTT or any, any like uh, Rahul was once saying, whether it's a play, it's performed on the stage or it's performed on the streets or on OTT or theatre, a good story will work. So, and that mm -hmm. is the truth. And uh, it so happens that um, Netflix allowed me to tell this story and tell it well. They supported me in every which way. Uh, my producer's Clean Slate film was partnered by Netflix in trying to tell the story in the best possible way. So for me personally, it was mm -hmm. a great, great experience that I got to 
you know right. uh, show my film on netflix so uh, but stories work even if your grandmother tells you at night or uh, sitting on the chat if it's a good story it will work <laughs> right. So, to to uh, tell me that uh, what liberty does it gives you as an actor, you know, uh, to have your movie released on a platform like uh, like Netflix or Amazon, and how liberating it is for you guys. <laughs> See, I'll talk from my personal experience. I personally believe yeah. that you know, with OTT, I think I moved to Bombay some three years back, and when back then when I would go for auditions and meet people. And I would say everybody would just be cribbing about not having enough work. And now when I go mm-hmm. and meet the same people, people they're all doing some of the other things. Somebody is doing a web show for some uh, platform. Somebody is doing a, you know, a film for either Amazon or Netflix or you know Z5. So I think it definitely has created a lot of work opportunities for us actors. And you know, as actors or mm-hmm. as directors, as filmmakers, I think you can, you know, sometimes take creative liberties here because. You know that your audience is not limited. You know that your product is going to be seen by people of say 190 countries. You know, so you can, I think, sometimes experiment with your craft. Your 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 filmmaker can experiment with. You know, he can uh, pick actors who are who are not known because he can. Uh, you know, experiment. So I think there's a lot of scope for experiments. Also, since you brought up that to- topic of you know, it, it being a female-oriented film. Netflix, I think, has. I was watching a film on Netflix. I think two days back, and I found out that Netflix has a subcategory where you know they have all the right. films that are just women-oriented. You know, Correct. so I think it's a great step forward, and I think you know people should. People are doing stuff for women. I think today we are writing good roles for women. We are you know getting great opportunities. We are getting to play powerful leads, and yeah, I think it's the best time for you know. As an actress, to be working in the industry for me, there's there's work and That's there are you know great parts for for women to be played. Uh, Rahul, so like I was talking to you before, I know this is not the right platform to ha- ask that question which I asked before. But you know, you've been in in this industry for a very long time. You've been in the industry for 27 years, and I don't know if I'll get a chance to ask you this question again. But I want to know. Making into this industry without a godfather, how difficult it, it was for you, and have you encountered such uh, such bullying cases, or and how do you how did you cope up with that? Because you know that's a message that everyone want to know, and a lot of people might be hoping to hear you and know about your experience and how to deal with it. So I have a I have a very strong opinion, and I have a very clear opinion on this, and there are five points that I want to make, but I'm not going to make them here. I never, ever express an opinion. I haven't done it for 10 years to any journalist because I only trust my words to go out from my mouth through social media. I will post a page or a blog or a thing whereby everything I want to say at length with nuance will come out. So I'm not evading your question. I have a strong opinion about it and I will express it. First, I don't believe now is the time at all. All And second, whatever I say to you will be twisted not by you but by people around you. By, by people at large. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to say mm-hmm. anything right now, but guaranteed, guaranteed I will be posting something with all five points I want to make very clearly put in my own language. So not because of Bulbul okay. and not because it's interfering with the release. I will do it, but Okay. All right. So last question that I want to end up and I want to know everyone's, uh, everyone's view on it as well. So what are we, uh, the industry is going through a very tough time right now. You know, uh, the major people who are hit right now are the spot boys, the junior artists who are not getting work and people are losing hope and, they, uh, and they're and harming themselves. So I want you all to give just a small message to such people to have faith in, in themselves. Things will get better and uh, not to do anything harsh, you know, where people, where they regret and the family regret. Can you do that? As- <coughs> no, look. There's no point telling people to have faith because nobody knows when a cure for COVID is going to come two years, three years, four years, Mm -hmm. five years. Nobody knows when the next shot is going to be taking place or when the next shooting will happen um, or when the next wave of COVID will happen, Imran, and again, things will come to a grinding halt. The only thing I can say is please look for other things to do. If you're a spot boy or you're a director or you're a set designer, Look for other things to do if you have to keep the home fires burning. 
if I have to keep the home fires burning and I don't have any money, I will look for other ways to make money, Imran. So everybody, mm -hmm. please stop waiting for when your major profession is going to start and look for other things to do that can get you income. And don't worry about your ego. Jo bhi karna hai karo, put food on the table, keep your self-respect and your pride, but don't sit there waiting for a magic moment to happen and everything will be okay. Get strong. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are all here to help. Personally, I'm very happy to help anybody who wants some other kind of employment. I know spot boys who have become peons in offices. You know, I know directors right now who are looking to do uh, writing for um, uh, books and stuff like that. So go ahead, find another channel of income. Don't wait for this uh, to happen magically. Be strong and take your responsibility for yourself and your family in your hands. All right. Uh, guys, you want to add something? Just, I think the entire world is going through tough times and it, you know, I think I'm just very lucky and I keep thanking God that I have, you know, I have basic things like food and shelter and there are many people who are, you know, walking miles to reach to their families and, you know, it's, it's a tough time for all of us every other day. There's some of the other bad news, but I think it's very important for all of us at this time to, to stay positive and to stay connected with our loved ones because, that is something that's very important. And what we do normally is that we get, you know, so busy in our lives that we, that's the thing that we forget. We, we forget to call our parents. We forget to, you know, be in touch with our friends. So I think that's what we should all do. And just, I'm, I know one day everything will be fine and we should just be positive till then. And yeah, stay in touch with as many friends as you can. That's very sweet of you. Ma'am? Yeah, these are very strange times that we are living in and um, it's the new normal as they say. So we have to find new ways to deal with ourselves, our uh, responsibilities to our families, our responsibility to ourselves and how we will function in this world. So everyone has to reconfigure. Purane tarike shayad ab kaam na kare, at least kuch time tak. So we have to take all our precautions, be strong, as strong as we can, can, and if not, then reach out. Reach out Absolutely. to your friends, your family. Always know that koi na koi hai jisse baat ki ja sakti hai, madad mangi ja sakti hai. So uh, that's all. God bless you all. Oh, that was sweet. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for that sweet message. I guess uh, uh, people who will hear you will have something, you know, they'll think about it. So thank you so much for that. And I hope Bulbul is a great success. People will people will like it as much thank as you. I loved it. All right. They love it for the message that's, uh, that's behind it. They love it for the, they love it for the, the what you can say is like the world that you have created, ma'am. Uh, and people are going to surely enjoy it. I'm, I'm sure about that. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much, guys, for chatting with me. I'll see you guys again, and best of luck again, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.